Hello and welcome to the Blue Monday podcast covering all things Ipswich Town Football Club since 2015. My name is Mikey Penty smith and on the weekend that Cricket's 100 reached its conclusion, here to field your questions are David Diamond and Craig Finbell. I trust you're doing well, gents? Yeah, thanks, Mikey. Yeah, pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks. Good stuff. And you enjoyed your weekend, foot, football aside, dare I say it? Oh, I think I enjoyed the football as well really yeah i think so yeah all pretty um all pretty good so watch a little bit of the cricket yesterday which was pretty good pretty exciting so um and the football was football exciting <laughs> it was exciting yeah. it was exciting it's what, yeah it's what we all wanted yeah yeah i mean it's yeah. not it's, it's not what like watching yeah a dirge no no you know yes yeah, there's always something happening lovely stuff so let's let's get straight into it with the news and since Rich and Seb's preview show, we've learned that young Corian Darber has been loaned out to Salford City mm. and he went straight into the starting lineup for their game against Tyree Simpson Swindon. Firstly, Craig, this is a good move for him because he needs to get some hairs in his chest and games under his belt and all of that stuff. But the fact that he's gone straight into the starting lineup is a real positive as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely brilliant. And as you say, straight up against his mate. Tyrese, I did. I, I saw a couple of photos of them. They were in pretty close proximity um, for, for some of the match. And I saw him also being involved in in the the set two on the touchline. I don't know if any, either of you two saw that. Um, jo little Johnny Williams was scooting past down the touchline and <laughs> happened to pop into Gary Bowie. Uh, Gary Bowie, I think it is, the manager of Salford, into his technical area. And Bowie gave him a shove and pushed Johnny Williams over. And then there was a bit of a, a kerfuffle. And uh, yeah, and Darbo was in that. So yeah, there's a, there's a few little links in that in that particular match. But no. As you say, 100% for him and, and for Simpson, obviously, at, at Swindon, is get them game time, get them 40-odd games under their belt in, in League Two is a decent decent enough level for him. The only thing, obviously, is he's out of contract, isn't he, end of the season. So whether it's just a case of getting him in the shop window for him to disappear or hopefully get him, you know, get him fully, um, fully manned up, should we say, to come and, come and play for us. It remains to be seen, I suppose. Indeed, yeah, he's a, he's a cultured young player, isn't he, Dave? I know we haven't seen loads of him, but he, he he's quite an elegant centre back, isn't he? And Dabby, yeah, he's just not, you know, he's not going to dislodge who's there already. That's the thing with us, you know. And as Craig said, a year what last year in his contract, um, this is going to make or I say make or break him. Sounds a bit dramatic, but yeah, this is either going to get him another deal, or is as Craig quite rightly said, going to put him in the, you know, he's going to get good experience under his belt, put him in the shop window. I mean, as we all know, you know, Salford, really, you know, progressive, <laughs> progressive club. You know, we've all seen that from the, you know, the Neville documentaries and things like that. So um, yeah, a great, great move for him, I would have thought, and to go straight in, brilliant. And the way this and the way they've started, he could be playing under two or three different managers this year. You know, just to get a bit of experience. What, I mean, I missed it. Well, well, how did the game pan out? What was the score? Swindon won. Okay. Yeah. They yet they yet to win. Are they Salford? They they bottom or near near bottom of the league? I think. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I believe so. So yeah, it's basically ever since Gary Neville criticised owners <laughs> sacking managers all the time, he's he's had to sack managers, hasn't he? At Salford. Yeah, he um he's he hasn't got much of a shelf life for them. I wouldn't have thought. I don't know because they're very well. Yeah. They're very progressive, aren't they? Seemingly. Indeed. So Ambitious. with one Yeah, indeed. So one with one centre back going out, inevitably when as it's still August, we're we're linked to the centre back coming in according to TWTD. The name is Yaroslav Yak, who's a Crystal Palace player who's played for them once and been sent out on loan numerous times. I'm not expecting you to know much about him, Dave. Um but do you think we need another body there? And if we don't, if we are to make that 17th signing, where do you think it should be? I don't, I'm not necessarily think I'm, it should be there. In fact, I'm fairly certain it won't, fairly certain it won't be there. Um, I don't know. <laughs> Goalkeeper? <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> yeah, basically, I, I, 
I don't know. Well, nothing would surprise me if we do if we you know we didn't make another signing. I mean, look, you know, you'd think at centre back with mind you, and Dab has gone out on loan, so maybe it's not beyond the realms. It'll get it'll just get another one in there as potential, you know, potential cover. You know, I think we all think that perhaps Danesian can do a patch a patch job now and again, but he's not. You know, he's really not the answer. I think a lot of it depends on you know this Edmondson and his. His, his, his injury, which apparently I think is a hamstring or whatever. Apparently they're talking now that he might perhaps be ready or back in full training this week. So, yeah, I, uh, look, a 17th signing, I don't think would surprise any of us where. I'm not really sure where. Centre midfield. Yeah, be nice. <laughs> Someone who can tackle in centre midfield. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think that's right. I think, yeah, if that's a good point. I think we made that before. I think an enforcer, yeah, I think. Would be a good signer for me. Someone like, uh, I always quite liked him. Someone like a little Liam Bridcut, a real terrier in there. I thought you were going to say Flynn Downs then. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that obviously, yeah, they, he would have been, yeah, he would have fitted the bill quite nicely probably, but I think that was, we all know that ship had sailed long ago, I think. So, yeah, someone you, in that you, sort of Bridcut mould, someone like that. You just know with Flynn Downs, though, it will all depend on how well this season goes for Ipswich without him as to how we talk about Flynn Downs. If we have a poor season, he was the best midfielder we've ever well, had. If, if we have a good season, yeah. Masterstroke, he's, he's yeah. not all that. Yeah. Um, there was a victory for an Ipswich team this weekend, gents, as the Ipswich women's team edged past Crawley Wasps at Delwood Avenue. Um, the only surprise being that they only won 1-0. Um, nice. But this is, they've obviously taken a step up. They beat Hounslow as expected last week, but yeah, this was a big result for them. But unfortunately, the goal scorer, Blue Wilson, went off with a bad injury, according to, I think, um, GB was at the game, Dave. Yeah. Um, and he he tweeted that she went off with a bad injury. So oh, no. best wishes go to her yeah. and hopefully it's um, nothing serious. But really strong start to the season for Ipswich women's, at least. Um, yeah, as everyone they're... keeps saying, it's not about how you start. No, there's a bit of a common denominator in there. Though. I don't think they've conceded yet. <laughs> <laughs> Have they got yeah. a defensive coach, Dave? Do you know? Well, you know, you'd, you'd hope so. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, with no further ado, let's go into the. So, on to Saturday's game. And Milton Keynes were the visitors at Portman Road, having picked up four points from their opening games while we went in search of our first victory. And. Paul Cook made three changes. No real surprises. Vincent Young came back in for Danassien. Coulson made his debut in place of Penny at left-back, while Mr Wes Burns came in on the right for Piggott, who was obviously playing the 10. Fraser moved into the 10. Um, so, yeah, finally seeing Scott Fraser in the position that most people think that he should be playing in, Craig. Yeah, yeah. And when when the um, team came out, I was I was... I mean, the fans are with a couple of mates and we look at it and think, crikey, there's some pace in this team. <laughs> you know, you've got the, the two the two fullbacks behind um, the two, well, Burns, especially in in front of him. Um, and so we intrigued to see Coulson because we'd heard that he was uh, an attack-minded fullback. I was actually surprised by how small he was, actually. he looked Tiny. Yeah, he was, wasn't he? And you could yeah, sort of, slight, really slight. But, understand why he didn't fit in the Neil Warnock back four. Yeah. Um, he was more than happy to let him out, go out on loan. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, it was nice to see Fraser in, in um, number 10. He sort of drifted in and out. Certainly in the first half, he was, he wasn't on the ball as certainly as much as their, their number 10, they brought in to replace him. Um, interesting to see Vincent Young again. Um, me and Dave were stood next to each other at, uh, at Burton last weekend and he was, we were in the corner and he was sort of attacking towards us on, on one of the halves and he just looked rusty as hell. You know, his, his touch was off. He, he got beaten in a couple of sprints a couple of times. Um, you just got to sort of hope that it's a temporary thing and that he's working his way back to full fitness rather than it being a, you know, a, a slightly lesser Emir Hughes situation where he's not, never going to quite, quite get back to what he was. I think I think that's, oh, that's the that. most noticeable thing on it, Craig. That it was just you know when you know certainly when he first came to the club and you know, obviously before the injury, which come on, he hasn't played that many games, but he just had that burst of pace, didn't he? And yeah. um, clearly at Burton, he really didn't have it. There were signs yesterday, I thought, at times, certainly once or twice in the first half. But yeah, Burton, he was. Uh, well, we said he, he just got bullied out of the game by Aikens, really, didn't he? 
Yeah. And the thing is, with his burst of pace, it not only does it help him going forward, it helps him going back, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. He can get himself out of situations yeah. defensively because he was quick enough just to make up for his downfalls in terms of position and bits and pieces like that. Absolutely. So I'll just quickly run through the rest of the lineup. So it's Ladke and goal. Vincent Young, as you mentioned, right back. Wolford and Burgess, Coulson. Evans and Harper in front. Wes Burns on the right. Edwards on the left. Fraser in behind Bon. And I'll quickly, quickly run through the Milton Keynes team. Obviously, we've got to know Milton Keynes a little bit over the last couple of years. So they had Fisher in goal. Um, O'Hora, Darling and old Dean Lewington <laughs> as the back three. So they're sticking with the three at the back. Uh, Watson and Jules were the wing backs. Um, O'Reilly and Robson, centre uh, centre midfield, sorry. And then Twine sort of playing as a 10 in behind one. Troy Parrott and Mo Isa, who, or Isa, sorry, who are both players that we potentially could have signed in the summer, in one, one way or another. Quite a dangerous front three that, Dave, for this level. Good, good side. I thought they were a good side, really. Yeah, yeah. Um... No, very good. I was really impressed with this. We'll, we'll get on to that. The central midfield two were really good. Obviously, um, Rich in his preview came up trumps again with um, with O'Reilly, who um, who sort of impressed. But in fact, I and, and scored well. Subsequently, spoiler alert. But I thought seventeen was really good. That Robson, yeah, he Ethan Robson, he was really good. Really from lovely. The, from left the foot. very very beginning, it was oh, from the, literally the first minute right the from the get go. He, was, he yeah. really looked a good player. And um, I don't know if you saw the EFL show last night where one of the, I don't know who that summariser is. He's been on before, not the usual one, but I have seen him on there before. And he said, you know, looking at the game yesterday, Ipswich perhaps might be kicking themselves and thinking they've signed the wrong, the wrong one. <laughs> but look, yeah. Um, yeah, he looked really good. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let, let's, let's get into the game, uh, Dave. And I think because you sit at the north end of the West Stand, Mm-hmm. And Craig sits at the south end of the west end. Now we're both at the same end. Aren't we? Are we both at the same end? I think yeah, Dave, Craig's, Dave, Craig's Dave's a bit a, loftier. Yeah, Dave's about three or four seats. So he's more northern than I am. <laughs> okay. Yeah, slightly. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, we'll go from... Uh, <laughs> I was going to get you to sh share this one out because it's such a lovely goal. And this, it's not very often that we have a moment of excitement at that end of the I think, pitch. I think so. we should both we should <laughs> we should we should both have a go at it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Go on then. So yeah, sixteen minutes, Dave. So Macaulay Bond. Let's give it a little bit of context. Had that shocking miss on Tuesday night away at Cheltenham. Didn't I hear mean, from him for a couple of days, and then he came out and said he did. He did. And then I mean, he came out and said that he's he's going to put things right on Saturday. And brilliant boy, did he? Now, honestly, I mean. That must have haunted him. I mean, we all saw the miss. It was a shocker. And I didn't see... So I, I sometimes catch soccer, a bit of Soccer AM yesterday. That must have been on Soccer AM yesterday. Must have been. Um, whether it was as bad... I think we debated this. Whether it was as bad as Marlon Harewood's at Portman Road all those years ago, I'm not convinced it was. But it was It was a bad one. Yeah, one reason or another. And it, look, he must have... They must have given him sleepless nights, especially to go on and lose the game. Okay, if we go on and win the game, it's bad enough or even get a yeah. point. But to go on and lose it, and, he, you know, he's got to feel some sort of responsibility there. Well, big heart. Well, you know, and he came out and said, no, I've got to put it right. Okay, and you sort of... You almost think, well, yeah, you have. And, well, I mean, he certainly did. I mean, it... Do you know what? I'm, the more I see of this football, and the more I watch it, and you know, we go back to the Cheltenham game during the week, and you know, for all the pretty passing football and nice movement and stuff like that, you're going to get out of this division just playing direct football. I'm convinced. You, you know, it needs you need to mix it up, and and this goal pretty much summed it up. I mean, good, good. I suppose good vision, really. Um, by you know, I mean. Great ball! He absolutely launched it, didn't he? From like real right back, not, probably halfway in there, halfway in um, in our half. Probably not, not not the best diagonal ball you've seen from right back the last. No, it's, no, 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 no. We'll, we'll get under that. We'll go. We'll get under that. No, it certainly wasn't. But it was an absolute <laughs> launcher and clever by Bunks. He does sort of peel off. He's watching it and he peels off the centre half. He peels off the centre back shoulder. Just the first touch is just, I mean, if the first touch is, even if he blazes that over, the first touch is something else. But what a finish. He just lets it bounce once. Half volleys, difficult skill. Half volleys it, and it's no fault there for the keeper. Absolutely smashes it in. Just so, and I mean, that's a testament to the guy. You know, what, what confidence to do that after that, let's face it, horrific miss on Tuesday. Just brilliant. So happy for the for the lad, really. And you could see all the players were as well. I mean, obviously he scored the first goal with one up, but you know, absolutely class. One of the best goals I've seen, yeah, you know, down there for a, for a while actually. 
Yeah, Craig, it's almost like the t- the first touch was so good oh. he felt obliged to hit it. Yeah. Because yeah. that I know <laughs> maybe we, we sometimes talk about XG a little bit too much on this on this podcast, but the the XG there as he brings the ball down is so yeah. low. Yeah. But, but the thing is to do it to do it on the run and he, to cushion it with the outside of his right oh. foot, didn't he? It was literally cushioned it on the outside of his right foot to hit it with his left on the half volley. But interesting enough, just going back to what Dave was saying about the miss during the week, and and we were told that there was somebody who was ill, wasn't there? Um, Cooks, his son was ill, so he wasn't going to play. But to to give Bond that vote of confidence to be the central striker and to you know potentially drop Piggott um, to allow Fraser to play number yeah. ten, that that in itself is. You know, decent, decent man in management. And then subsequently to talk, as Dave was saying about going direct, well, we've already scored two goals. You know, we 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 spoke about last time I was on, we spoke about Norwood flicking it onto Bonn to score the last minute equaliser uh, to Morecambe. That was a direct yeah. forward flick on. The one that Bonn missed during the week was a flick on from Piggott <laughs> through to yep. Bonn, which mm. he then missed. And this one here is another direct goal. So, you know, mm. we... But, we but, will be mixing it up, I think. Yeah, you know, I think mixing it up is the key because it, yeah. if we just went pure uh, route yeah. one, it becomes really easy for um, really easy to defend against. Remember that Millwall yeah. away game a few years ago where the ball was just getting pumped up and Shitu was heading it away. It was the most <laughs> basic, pointless way of playing football ever. But you, if you do knock the ball about at the back, then it does actually become a little bit easier to play direct when you want to. And the thing is, and when that showed what Bond, I haven't seen a lot of a lot of Bond, you know, hold my hands up. But what he seems to be able to do is do a lot of things well, doesn't he? He he can come in short. He does win flick ons if he needs strong. to. He's mm. strong. He's quick. Mm. He can run the he can yeah. run the channels. Mm. He, he's scoring from twenty yards with his left foot. He's scoring again. Spoiler alert. He's scoring from near the six yard box with his right foot. So he does seem to be a a decent all round all round option. And he's an Ipswich. Absolutely. He's obviously an Ipswich lad, so you know, Ipswich lad supporter, which which helps as well. Just the sheer technique for that goal, as you said, was a, was a great. So you know, the flip side of that, if they showed his miss on Soccer AM, you know, this week, well, they should show. No doubt, I, I should think they should show that as you know, one of the goals of the week next week because it really was. Absolutely was. So at the other end, though, Milton Keynes looked pretty dangerous throughout, didn't they? They played some good football. Um, Robson hit the bar after a pacey counter attack involving Acer. That was our short corner, wasn't it? We took a short corner, and next yeah, thing you know, we they're, did. They're we did. in the crossbar within about Edwards, five seconds. It was, it was mm. Edwards, and Edwards was, jeez, I mean, I know we, we use that word unplayable, and you know, you'd say you'd go over the top, but first staff, you look at you think, well, <laughs> you know, no, you just he's untouchable almost, was he? He just beats players at will, doesn't he, when he wants to? And, both, and he beats them on both sides. Oh. Absolutely, and, and, he, and he gets into the area. What was noticeable? It was up our end, Dave, wasn't it? He gets into the area. You think, oh, he's going to cross it, and he actually takes another man on to get even closer to the byline before pulling it back, doesn't he? He's... Yeah, that 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 was that was the point. He didn't cover himself in glory because that was the short corner. You're dead right. I remember it now. That didn't <laughs> didn't quite, he didn't quite get that right, did he? Yeah, Brilliant. and they broke really quickly. <laughs> Let him off though for entertainment value. That oh. it'll be the first time in a while um, where I was listening to the game on Radio Suffolk and actually wishing that I was there. What was um, what was it sounded like a good atmosphere and it sounded exciting. What was Mill's take on him? Yeah. I mean not he he was just saying that they need to get the ball to him as, as yeah, much yeah. as possible. Yeah. Um but I think he he's in agreement with you, Dave, that yeah, sometimes we, we do need to be a little bit direct. But but yeah, he was just sort of saying you've got to you've got to get the ball to him as as much as possible. <laughs> Yeah, he was he he was really good. I mean, MK were they were just clever, weren't they? they? Were really good at just sucking us in and breaking the. That was a worrying thing, you know, just bypassing the press, weren't they? Every time they just wanted. Yeah. My lad was watching, and he probably made a really valid point. Was my lad was with me, and he said, "I don't get it." He said, "Every time they just beating the press and they're away. Why don't we just sit back? Just sit back and see what happens. Mm-hmm. You know, just take a step back, don't press, and just let them play, let them play out." But you know, every time we press, like every single time. Well, well, the other, well, we'll get on to perhaps burn second half. But pretty much every time they beat the press, and they were good enough to beat the press. You know, even Lewington one touch here with his all left foot, but one touch infield, and they were away and gone. Technically, very good, very, very good. 
the amount of times they did that, didn't they, in front of us, oh. first half especially, it went into Robson. As yet, it was always first touch, wasn't it? That's why, bang, it was, bang, bang, that's why we were beating us. It was first touch every time. Brilliant. Little triangles all, just to dig up the pitch, all the way up the pitch. And they did the Italian thing, didn't they, where the, <laughs> the goalkeeper would stand outside the box, wide of the box, and receive the centre-back would have the ball, <laughs> take the goal, goal kick. kick. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was. Um, they were, they were. Let's say easy on the eye. It was a good game. I, you know, I've got to say, look, as it panned out, okay. But it was a good, 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 good football match. Good game of football. Well, they've got proper, proper Ipswich football boys well, on the on the bench, you know, haven't they? Sure. So, yeah, yeah. Manning and Hogg. Mm. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it at Melton St. Audrey's though, Dave. Couldn't do it at Melton St. Audrey's and then rough and tough the CSIL, mate. No, of course they couldn't. Absolutely <laughs> not. That's where it really the counts. Shortest pitch in the world. <laughs> and they've got David Wright there as well, came on fr- did he Friday, I think he came along. Yeah, yeah. Apparently he was sat uh, quite high up. Um Yeah, he wasn't on the bench. What, I didn't see him. What, yeah, I was hoping to yeah, on the tactical yeah. side of it. Analysis. I didn't see him on the bench, but mm. no, I mean I mean I think that I don't know about Manny, but certainly I think Chris Hogg was really quite highly rated at the Ipswich, that's for sure. Hmm. So, yeah, a, a fairly positive first half, um, despite Milton Keynes maybe playing a slightly better football. And we started the second half on the front foot with Edwards causing problems, Bond having a close-range shot deflected wide right, before Burns picks the pocket of Lewington and has a just dribbles through. He's greedy, which I think is good. Has a shot. Keeper does well to save it onto the post, do you think? But... But in again, with that, with that one, pulled it across for Bond. Well, I don't know. I think he's got every right where he was. Shot there, you know, Dave. Yeah, well, you, you you have to there. I think yeah. I've probably gone left and trying to sort of put it in the far post. But <laughs> he, he, um, he, um, he, um, but again, you know, it's how unlucky is that the ball hits the inside of the post. We've got three attackers there, and, and it, it just falls. Goes out. Yeah. I mean, you know, and again, we said the guys who sit behind us, you know, they're they're perhaps they're fairly glass. I'd say glass half empty kind of guys. But so that could be a turning point. I mean. <laughs> yeah, but there you go. Small man again, like you know, like the penalty phrases, penalty like Bonds missed, just small margins and stuff. Mind you, they hit, well, we know they hit the woodwork though, so it works both ways. I guess. Imagine, imagine your um, captain being caught dallying on the ball and and letting it, you know, a attacker go through one on one. Unacceptable that in there, Craig. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get on. To, we'll get on to that one first of all. We've got to talk about a free kick from twenty five yards out. Yeah, crikey. Um, but I, to be fair, before the free kick, and I, I was, oh God, I it was, was a foul from Wolfenden, wasn't it? Yeah, and I was shouting at Wolfenden when he missed because he missed the interception, didn't he? It was like a pretty standard ball through, and he was he was sort of caught unbalanced, twisting, turning the wrong way, and 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 missed the interception, which made its way through to Twine, and then he had, you know, he had to he had to bundle him over. He wasn't he was the wrong side of him. You didn't want Twine getting any close to the goal, so he probably had to do it, but. It was pretty much exactly 24 yards out, going by the strips on the on the pitch. Um, and you sort of, you sort of, he'd, he'd already had a, a shot first half, hadn't he? Straight from a throw in. Um, the throw in had gone a bit like sort of when Marcus Stewart's semi final goal, where Holland sort of knocked it, it over to him to get first half. Early. Yeah, exactly. He did that the first half from a throw in. In front of Lackey, yeah. Yeah. Um, and he lined up, and Lackey's ready, and yeah, it was a decent hit. He got it over the wall and on target, which is all you need from from um, from the guys taking it. But Claggy gets two hands to it, doesn't he? Pretty much. I've watched it on the replay time and time and yeah. time again, and he's there. And he's I don't know whether he's he can actually catch it from what I can see, and he doesn't seem whether he thinks he's too close to the post or or what. It's just I don't know. It's a it's a soft a soft goal to to concede. I think from it's not as if it's top corner. He gets two hands to it, even if he's positioned too far over to the left. When the when he's taken it, he still gets over enough to yeah. to get two solid hands to it. He but... got there, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Nice, yeah. nice bit of top spin on it though, Dave. It was a nice shape from. Twine, yeah. Well, I mean, he's uh, look. I mean, he had a shot just after that, which is just what? What's this guy doing playing in this division for Christ's sake? Mm. Which, to be fair to Ladke, he made a real. I thought it was a really good save, and you know, I think one or two people said after, well, has he actually made a proper save yet? Well, that was certainly one that the after a dipping shot. For about thirty yards, it's going right in the top corner, and I thought that was that was a half decent save. But I think Craig's right; it's just disappointing that when I first saw it, I thought, "Oh, he's got a hand to that." But now, when you see it again, he actually does get two ends, and he, he doesn't. Yeah. He sort of doesn't get around it, does he? Sort of like pushes it in. He doesn't sort of get get around the. But look, it is a good, it's good technique, and and he gets it up and down, and he hits. 
Yeah, so Ronaldo, I say Ronaldo, it's that Ronaldo type free kick where he hits it off the laces, so he gets a bit of swerve and dip and stuff on it, a bit like his shot later on. Um, yeah, you know, you think he's got enough on that to save it, though, but yeah. Actually, funnily enough, really, I was really hoping you were going to say swaz on it then, Dave. But... Swaz. <laughs> that in your vocabulary, Dave? <laughs> no, nah, it's not, mate. No, I'm not down with the kids enough to say swaz. <laughs> but it will do now, though. That's it. <laughs> funnily enough, actually, and I was, I was going to mention later on, I, I, I briefly listened to the, the D3, D4 um, pod earlier because uh, they, they put a tweet up saying they'd be talking a little bit about Ipswich. And one of the guys in there was saying that there are you know, certain stats about goalkeepers and and the statistics about what they should have said, like like XG, but individualized yeah. to goalkeepers. And Halanke's rating, whatever you want to call it, is minus 3.4 currently, which is the worst in the division. So basically, he should have saved 3.4 more goals than he currently has at this stage of the season. Goodness me. It's sort of compared to the difficulty of the chance that he has conceded. Right. So so I guess if, if you smash one into the top corner from 35 yeah, yards, that's that... So the save he made that Dave just spoke about from Twine, who was 25 yards out, that would have been a minimal chance in any yeah, case. Yeah, he wouldn't have got any credit for it. Yeah, I suppose no. it, yeah, it's because he hasn't really made As any said, sort of, he hasn't saved any one on ones one yet on or anything one. like point, that. Point, yeah. point yeah. blank, point blank, yeah. yeah. Or, or penalties. And then we look at the op- <laughs> opposition and their goalkeeper made at least one clear save yesterday, didn't he? What a save from Burns yeah. was, yeah. Yeah. So there you go. But um, yeah, Carroll comes on for Burns. Um, and four minutes later, Dave, we regain the lead. Yeah, I mean, I think the key also, um, Coulson goes off and Penny Penny comes on for Coulson. Um, I mean, I don't know what Craig thought first sight of Coulson. Do you know what? What I've seen of Penny so far, I'm not, not, I mean, look, we've seen that we only saw an hour, I think, of Coulson yesterday, didn't he? So hard to say, but I, I don't think Penny's been too bad, actually. I really don't think he's been too bad, but clearly, you know, Cook wanted Coulson there. Um, I think he went off and I think he's carrying a slight knee injury or something. When he walked in front of us, he was sort of holding his knee a bit. I don't think there's anything serious to you, Craig. And he, I don't, he didn't go down in a heap no, or anything, did he? Just, you know, so hopefully as well. Goosed, as, you as Mick would say, goosed. Rusty but, um, was. Penny, Penny comes on. It's, 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 a, it's a good goal as well. I mean, you know, gets the ball. What, what I do like about our play this year, the passing has just got more conviction about it. When we do get the ball down and pass, it's just got more intent, hasn't it? And both these were great. I mean, Penny gets the ball, I think, just in their half, in the, you know, obviously wide on the touchline. Um, pings in a left foot ball to Fraser, who's made quite a good run. And it's a good touch from Fraser. And again, he's now, I don't know, on the probably on the edge of that box, takes a touch, and it's that ball was... There's, a boycott would say in the corridor of uncertainty. Corridor of uncertainty. Six, six yard box. And this, this actually, when I saw it from where we are, Craig, you're a bit higher than me, but when I saw it from where we are, I thought, oh, that's quite good. He's just slid that in. This is a really good finish. This is a hard mm. finish because the ball was whipped across and it bounces in front of him. I mean, again, you know, the miss at Cheltenham was one thing, but, you know, if this had slid in and this had sort of hit his instep and gone wide, you'd have thought, oh, good chance, but a tough one. He's sliding in, but this is a really good finish as well. You know, he slides in. And, and you know, so as the ball bounces, just great timing, and yeah, it's point blank, but it's, it's a really good finish, good goal, lovely. Again, a well crafted goal, similar in, I suppose, quite similar crafted goal to Fraser's against Morecambe, you know, similar position sort of thing. But yeah, really, you know, really good move. And as I said, I think it was just the intent of the pass, and it was zipped in, and you know, the the ball from Fraser was in the right area, and yeah, you know, Bonnie, he's well, he looks to me like a, a goal scorer. As, as, as you said. But by, by that time, Carroll had come on, hadn't he? So Fraser was actually playing wide right. <laughs> he but, was actually, but yeah. He wandered all the way into that that left channel, <laughs> yeah. hadn't he? Yeah. Which he probably which he probably hadn't done too much when he's actually playing more central. <laughs> um, but that ball from Penny was the one that made it, wasn't it? It was just oh, that that, in, that that ping ping inside was just lovely. And a really good touch from Fraser. He's technically he was a good footballer, and he really good touch and you know that ball, you know with. Yeah, we talk about our sort of departed players and young Andre, who, you know, we say we all liked and all, you know, wanted to do well. But, you know, we saw some of his passing, lovely left foot, but it'd be, just wouldn't have that conviction sometimes, would it? You know, sometimes he's sometimes too good to play the ball around the corner and they'd be too good. But, yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was a really good goal. And you think from there, here we go, <laughs> onwards. But, See the game but only moments later, Craig, you'd have been saying, blimey O'Reilly, here we go. I wasn't saying I wasn't saying blimey O'Reilly, mate, up in the family enclosure. Um, um, 
Yeah, but as I said, Carol had come on by now, and pretty much as soon as Carol come on, and Rich, I think Rich was typing the same time I was typing on on our WhatsApp saying this is looks to it like it's confused everybody that Carol had come on. It certainly confused um, Evans and Harper in central midfield because they'd been they'd been pushed a little bit further forward. So instead yeah. of sitting in front of the back four, Carol was now sitting in the back front of the back four, and they were now playing a more of a, I suppose, you know, regular central midfield pairing really. Um, mm. And it and they did it didn't suit either of them to my eyes um, once they come on. But I say so. Carol was now sitting in and doing sort of the job that um, Robson was doing for for Milton Keynes in that he was accepting the ball off off the defence and hitting first time first time balls out out to out to the fullbacks or out to the out to the wing. Um, and actually, he looked he looked nice and neat and tidy exactly mm. as you'd you'd expect him to do. Um, and he just knocked a a gent a gentle normal ball into into Evans who was facing the facing our goal and Evans his first touch is just too heavy he did the, mm. his first touch takes the ball two yards away from him and then he just he just looks sluggish to to Dithers, recover it. Dithers. Yeah, I don't know whether he doesn't <laughs> realize that O'Reilly's on his back where well, he should do he's essentially midfield. he's gonna have somebody on him but yeah but he's O'Reilly's not side on is he so oh, he's, no, he's, exactly. yeah, he's facing he's not on a half turn Square onto the yeah, square onto our our goal, and I Riley nicks it nicks it off of him, nicks it past him, and unlike Burns and our, and and their goalie, our goalie didn't uh, didn't oh, save it. He just never looked like he was gonna. No, it was a good finish though, and he's in yeah. on goal. He's, to be fair to him, he perhaps he was a bit more central and on his, you know, when he's good where where Burns was sort of hitting across an with his right foot. He's he's on yeah. a good angle for left foot, and, and, and it's and, a good good hard finish. I don't think I don't Clacky would have. It'd been a great save had he kept that out, but yeah. It's but, all, but also they had another guy, didn't they, alongside him? So yeah, you know, you've always got the option that you know he yeah. could have squared it. So you know you, you don't suppose Flag he knew you know, shit or bust. Really Just again, with. similar, but very similar position to um to the Morecambe goal, wasn't it? Very similar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that just but to to go one nil up and then to to concede in one one and then to go again and get and get. Go ahead again, and you know, the crowd's out. now building. The, yeah, the momentum's building, and just something like that to come from the captain. Out, well, yeah. the most, you know, the most experienced player on the pitch, your captain. It just early drain, days, just uh, drain you. Early so. days. Can you imagine the reaction to our captain last season doing that? <laughs> 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 but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah you it, know, Paul Cook's hung his hat on this guy. You know, he's got him in. He's now made him captain, whether he's going to be permanent mm. captain or not. And you think. Crikey, you I'm know, not, these other guys are look, on the team thinking, looking around, thinking, well, if he's going to do it. He's not He's not convinced me yet. He's not no. convinced me at all. Not yet. I think... Um, hey, oh, it's go a on, tough, go on. It's a tough gig, though, coming in as a... Oh, as it is. A no, no, it is. I, I, mean, well. I, I think the guy at the back who came in, he quite impressed me, actually. The, yeah, uh, Burgess at the back looks a player, you know, left foot. No, it looked a better. To be fair, Wolfen in yesterday, I just thought it looked a bit. It did look a better balance, didn't he? Okay, you can say Wolfie, you know, gave a you know careless free kick for their equaliser, but I just thought it, you know it looked better yesterday, didn't it? Just a lot more comfortable, both of them yeah. really. First half, Wolfen didn't got a lot of toes in here and there, and, and swept up um, bits and pieces. Obviously, he's just more comfortable playing on the right. But that, yeah, I'm 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 with David. That bird just looks a, a good, strong, <laughs> and, uh, solid. Sign. And he was talking right the way through when he was organising yeah. right the way through. I think I think Craig's probably right that um, you know if yeah he, he looks a natural captain to me. I mean okay Evans is is in possession at the moment, but he looks uh, he looks a natural natural to me. But also I noticed that one of the the corners in the second half that we were defending. I think I think we'd cleared it initially. Then another then it came back in again, and um, Evans hadn't picked up his man second time oh, around, and they knocked him, him out. Didn't he? he did, yeah. Burgess gave him an absolute earful Rocket, to Evans. Yeah. So, you know, sort yourself yeah. out. You know. Yeah, do your job. Yeah. Yeah. That's, good. Yeah. That's good to see, though, that Burgess is is ha- happy to dish that sort of he thing. Looked, he, he, he looked good. He, he looked really good to me. Yeah, yeah, nice nice sort of left foot. Yeah, composed sort of player. Big. Yeah, look good. Be So, be interesting to see this, this other lad who we haven't, haven't seen yet. Yeah. Hmm. But you want Lee Evans to stand up and be counted. So... <laughs> Into injury time, towards the end of the game, Dobra comes on for Fraser with ten minutes left, and I was thinking, oh, go on, Dobra, maybe maybe this is this is his moment; he'll break through. But didn't really seem to happen for him, or on a ball, indeed us 
the last 10 minutes of the game and it was Milton Keynes who looked more likely. And in injury time, they carved out that last chance. And uh, on loan Norwich attacker, Josh Martin hit the crossbar from close range. That would have been a real stomach punch, wouldn't it? That one. Um, so 2-2 yeah. two, two is how it finished. I'm going to come to you first, Dave, with a question. Are you more or less worried about where we are as a team after that game? Um, I suppose slightly All the same. more. Wo- Bit of both. No, no, I don't think so. I mean, I think it could be slightly more. The longer it goes, and you don't pick up a win, and you're conceding two goals every single game, I think the the worry will will intensify, doesn't it? You know, you think, well, hang on, <laughs> not not enough's enough because okay, it's four games in. Yeah, we've drawn two, lost two, but yeah, it's um, it is a concern. It, let's say it's a it's it's a concern. Yeah. Um, you know, you just need to get that first win as quick as possible, and then you know, and then obviously carry it on from there. But yeah, I mean, I think we all went yesterday hoping for a, you know, obviously hoping for a resounding win. And you go one up, and we're playing good football, and you think, yep, yeah, okay. And then they they grew into the game. They're, they're a nice side. I, mean, I think they're a nice, well organised side. I mean, you know, Manning. Yeah, you know, that's not just purely down to Manning. God, he's only been there what two or three games now. You know, their players are in from the start of the season, but they look a well drilled, good technical outfit. Who I think will take take points. I don't think they'll be. I don't quite think they'll be up there challenging the playoffs or anything. But you'd think they're a top twelve, top ten you know, top 10 useful, you know, more than useful side, really. But, um, yeah, uh, you know, one, uh, yeah, yeah, one, the, uh, one uh, team that you would have expected to beat, to beat at home. And probably they had their most consistent, they had their most prolonged spell of possession and pressure, perhaps more worrying, was the final period of the match, actually. Once they really, yeah, we just didn't get on the ball at all. And they dominated, I'd say, the last... Five ten minutes, including the um, including the injury time, the yeah, time added on. That was perhaps a concern, also really. Well, that's what I'm saying about when we when we went to four one four four one four yeah. one. If that, yeah. that just seemed to confuse our centre midfield, and they were they weren't didn't have the best of games in any case, as Dave said at the very beginning. You know, they were pretty much outplayed um, by O'Reilly I mean, and Robson. I thought first half Harper when Harper got on the ball first half he looked really good. I mean, he's going you can yeah. see he's a player. I can't believe he's twenty one for goodness sake. You know, again you see you got to think of that. He's twenty one. He's you know he's a kid. You know, but yeah. really good. Evans for me didn't really do much at all. Harper first half when he got on the ball looked really good. He's got you know he's quite strong. He can drop his shoulder and he's quite clever. Um, and again good intent intent with the passing. But yeah, we just didn't see him second half and and. Edwards got the ball. He, well, he did create. He, whenever he got the ball in any sort of advanced position, Craig didn't he? he created. He yeah. created a chance, didn't he? Pretty much every yeah. single time. And Mills yeah. is right. You know, they just got to get the ball to him. Thing is, I've I've been to every match so far, league league cup, whatever. And humble it, brag. In, in terms, <laughs> in ter- the annual leave. In terms of, <laughs> um, in terms of going forward and attacking every match we've looked better in terms of going forward and yeah. every match every match we've had longer periods of looking better in the you know in those attacking situations um and from a defensive perspective you know like yesterday the two goals were arguably two mistakes well you know a free kick and a, and a definite mistake so you now it's not as if we're getting i appreciate yesterday they had a few chances we're not getting ripped to shreds in open play from our setup too much oh, and and you're right on tuesday we just, just didn't defend the long throw did we yeah just didn't yeah couldn't cope with it yeah yeah so you know, the, oh god it's 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 <laughs> tough isn't it you know as dave was saying about his his close close encounters in in the uh, in the lower lower west you know your glass half empty glass half empty glass half full at the moment christ am i you know it's a flick of a coin isn't it <laughs> It's, it's just, it's just so Ipswich, though, isn't it? It really is our club, isn't it? It just is, you know. Um, look, I mean, the, look, the, the, you could see it, it's it's much better. I mean, good God, it's been terrible the last, you know, few scenes. The level of standard of football's been awful. It is much better, and it is much more exciting. But I think, yeah, we could just do with a, yeah, keep up the good football with perhaps a little less <laughs> general excitement, really. <laughs> Lovely stuff. So, speaking of excitement, let's move into these Twitter questions. And of course, these are picked out at random. And it just so happens that the first person whose question I've picked out is um, Finland's Yanni Salonen. Could we make a hypothesis <laughs> that Liam Richardson took care of the defensive side of things when working with Cook? 
And who do you think the defensive master? <laughs> I feel like this is a loaded question. Who do you think is the defensive mastermind in the current coaching team? I'll go to you, Craig. <laughs> Whatever it is, they need firing. The um, <laughs> It's funny. I was I was thinking of this because you can. Oh God! And, and there was a conversation going on on TWTD about this. We've got a, a fully stocked, fully qualified medical department. Yeah. And we've got we've got an fully almost fully stocked underqualified coaching staff from what I can see. Mm. Um, you can sort of see why Franny Jeffers has been bought in. You know, he's an international striker of some repute. You know, he, you can see how he could potentially work with the strikers and the forwards, et cetera, et cetera. Gary Roberts, you know, he's not necessarily got the qualifications. He's been brought in as a, I don't know, a trusted lieutenant, I suppose, of, of Cooks. Again, he was always more of an attacking player, an attacking midfielder, winger, etc. Number ten. Again, yeah. he can help. He can help in that area of the pitch. Yeah. Um, so if if they're doing that, if they're doing a good job. Yeah, moment. exactly that. But you know, is it is it as as sorry as the question has sort of said? Was it Richardson that was doing the defensive part? I went when I was sat watching the the Newport um, Cup game um, week before last. I was sitting in a different seat, um, and John McGreal was sat two or three seats hmm. along watching just watching the match and you just wonder whether that should have been or still can be the appointment because we are to my eyes we're still missing someone who's not intrinsically linked to to Paul Cook and his regime if you like you see what I mean I'd appreciate he's still a scouser John McGrill but you know he's <laughs> he's <laughs> one hopefully just one one person removed from it who can come and just offer a little bit of outsider um i don't know what to look for is just a, a sounding board more than anything else to just being this cartel of guys who, who've been previously been around in and around um paul cook i think you're trying to say cook and his cronies <laughs> cook and we, his drinking buddies maybe mcgrill doesn't drink enough maybe we, he failed um, the initiations we, we um we spoke about that yesterday with i say with these guys i said with exactly the name we came up with john mcgrill yeah well it's an obvious one because he he lives locally yeah he was a fantastic defender and he's got coaching and managerial pedigree. Cultured, so, wasn't he? McGreal? And he's a scout, so defender. that ticks that box as well. Um, but, everything. I, um, but I would, I would just like to know who is doing, who, you know, I'm, not, I'm not saying none of them can do it, but I would just like to know who is doing, who's doing the defensive shape and the, you know, in this situation, we're getting attacked from here. You two, we, Paul Cook talked about these, this box of, or the square of sent two central defenders, two central midfielders. Well, it's obviously his the way he sets out the play. So obviously Paul Cook's doing, I assume. It's not you're not going to trust Franny Jeffers or Gary Roberts to drill your defence. You know, they're not tying these guys together with rope, hmm. Tony Adams style, and getting them to move up and down in in lines, are they? So presumably it is Paul Cook and uh, the kit man from Wigan. <laughs> the kit man, right? Uh, C C Basks uh, uh, asked Dave, are the fans expecting too much this season? Um, in Schwartz's video before the season started, he said, we may not get promoted this season. Are the owners more realistic on how this season could possibly go, thus giving Cook the proper time needed? <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question, isn't it? That's a good question. Um, I think we need to start winning for, for our manager. I think he needs to start winning games fairly, fairly shortly. I think there's all, you know, his way of, you know, getting, you know, getting promotion, being in the, you know, being in the mix for promotion. And I think we've all said that, look, come, I don't know, um, halfway, halfway through the season, if we're if we're sort of languishing somewhere points off the playoffs, then it wouldn't surprise me if they acted then. It really wouldn't surprise me. Hmm. And in a similar vein, Patrick Palmer asks, uh, is it early days to, like for a good season like Blackpool last year or is it a bit like the new Hurst era with battling home draws? And away defeats. There oh, are got, um, no. some similarities there, aren't there? There are, but, but come on, we've got much more. There, there, what you think? There's much more quality in this squad, isn't it? Goodness me, good, good crikey, surely. Um, for, for, at least when Hurst was in charge, we were we were signing <laughs> players from the league below to step up, and and this, you know, we have been signing players from the league above. To, no, that's a good come, point. Come yeah, yeah, that's excusable if we're not performing yeah. well. Yeah. Um, but we're only four games in. Come on. We're only yeah. four games in. What, what he's got noticed, actually, we, we're just talking about in general, is the owners themselves have been quiet, haven't they? It's been noticeable since the season started. Yeah, yeah. You haven't, you haven't heard from him. It's been Ashton, hasn't it? 
now since yep. and they, that's what they said they'd do as well actually they said you know while we're in the summer and everyone's you know the season hasn't started and everyone's giddy you know we'll chat 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 but now we're at the business part of the season they've shut up shop and just let the guys in the uk get on with it maybe apathy is set in already craig they're real tractor boys now <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of americans four games <laughs> speaking of americans daryl in florida asks john walk says cameron humphreys is town's best midfielder and should be in the side will he be promoted soon do we think carol coming in maybe makes that a little bit harder yeah i think yeah. so yeah i mean he's obviously a great you know, a great prospect and looks really good. You know, lovely left foot, but no, no, he's quite, quite slight. You know, the, I'm not sure he's up to quite the rigours of of League One just yet. But, but, but we'll we'll get to see a bit of him in the Pizza Trophy, won't we? And yeah, he's, I mean, he's probably not one again. to stand out it's on loan. Just shame, yet. you know. Perhaps the you know, it's just a shame and disappointing that you know we lost. We shouldn't have done. Should we? By all account, I wasn't there. That we, you know, we lost the lost to Newport really because that had given yeah. us another game wouldn't it for goodness sake you know and a much more perhaps a competitive game surely than the than the old pizza than the old pizza trophy but yeah he's obviously a player who's well thought of down there and he's got great you know a lot of potential like I said lovely left foot but no I, yeah that, but just keeping him around the squad is, is probably would be enough this season I would have thought yeah I think and, as we and said, Darryl sorry Craig Sorry, Mike, I was just going to say that, as we said before, you know, the, the type of midfield that we're probably looking for isn't going to be yeah. in the mould of, of him, is it? It's going to be, nah. you know, we heard whispers about Morsey, didn't we, from Middlesbrough. Yeah. Mm. That's that's the sort of player that you'd... A bruiser. Play. If they were going to go after anyone, it'd be that, that kind of player. Yeah. Sorry, Mike. And uh, Daryl actually asked two good questions this week. Well, th this one really pops out of me as one to ask you, Craig. Is the keeper position a liability again? <laughs> Too early to say, well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is, and it, you know, Craig, at least give give the guy a chance. But as I say, his stats at the moment don't look great, and yeah, you know, he's he's letting a couple of soft ones to my eyes, and it'd just be nice. You know, not wishing to get on the the Rich Woodward bandwagon of of slagging off our goalkeepers, but <laughs> it, it would be nice just to see him make a save. As you said before about the one on one, yeah, when they scored their goal. Just for him to make that save, make a save that you're not expecting him to, to make. Be fair, just to, to be fair, he made a that must have got him actually because he made a one on one. At two two, didn't he? When the guy the guy goes through down the his left leg. and tries and try yeah, he tries to put it in his near post right foot, didn't he? I'd forgotten about that. I mean that was yeah. pretty point blank. That was a good chance. I'd almost forgotten about that. But yeah. I mean, what I what I did notice yesterday, he certainly comes for crosses quite well. He caught three or four quite well yesterday, I thought which I didn't think he had been. Well, certainly that wasn't perhaps um, um, too um, is, is, obvious. It, what, what's his, because I haven't, I haven't seen him live yet, what's his distribution like? It's an upgrade on Holy, surely. Yeah, yeah, he, he's not he's not being asked to ping it long particularly. You know, he's, it's all very much on the floor to, to feet. Um, what he looks he comfortable does, doing that, does he? Yeah, receiving yeah, yeah. it, he does. Yeah, yeah. He doesn't bowl it out over arm to a, to an it's It's rolled out under arm and it's, or it's kicked on the floor. When, he's, He's not particularly accurate when he kicks it from hand. Uh, notice when he no, kicks he it get, long. Yeah, he, he gets those high loopy ones, doesn't he? Yeah, I'd say that's yeah. a good point. But, but I know, thought he, could, like I said, I thought his handling was quite good. Yesterday came for cross as well. Um, yeah, yeah what he there's, had to there's do, a couple of in the like first half, which just bounced before him, which he just handled. You know, pretty, pretty made yeah. him look like pretty standard save. So you know, he's early doors. He's had. You know, they're saying about Luke Wolfenden having a different central defensive partner in X amount of games. Yeah, well, he's you a can't central defensive partnership yeah, in front of him point. for. X Good amount point. of games, isn't he? Yeah. You know, hopefully once we get Ed Edmondson in and um, Burgess in as you're nailed on two central defenders, you may find that the whole thing just solidifies, hopefully. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Paul, Paul Westlake asks a fairly familiar question. Um, surely someone will be on the back of a thumping when it all comes together for <laughs> us. Uh, question is, who and how long are we going to wait? And, and Mullet asks, how close is Cook to the precipice? It, next Saturday is the first win. Yeah, I'm back I, I think so. stand. I think I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. I don't <laughs> I know why me being there changes I anything. I guess, but. <laughs> Thursday. Oh, yeah, you'd, you'd you'd think next Saturday would be um would be the would be the one. Although they certainly didn't roll over at Sunderland yesterday, did they? Not really. But anyway, yeah. I they, think, score, they haven't don't score many goals away from home though, Wimbledon. I don't think. Um. Not so that, yeah. Well, exactly that, yeah. And as you said, it, things are things do look marginally better going forward. They do, and as oh. Dave said about Edmondson being around, hopefully, if if not next weekend and the weekend after, then things are hopefully will just start to solidify and we'll stop giving teams 
Couple yeah, it'll be, uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what he does. I mean, I think he, yeah, he needs to persevere with Vincent Young. Because Vincent Young probably just, we all know his quality, don't we? I think he just needs games, games needs time on the pitch, doesn't he? For God's sake, and get the games under his belt, really. I think that's perhaps more his problem, Gray. You know, as you said, Rust, we both said at Burton, he looked rusty. Well, that, that, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to get rid of that by being on the bench. So, you know, hopefully he's going to, he's going to improve. Left back's an interesting one for me. I mean, obviously he's got that Coulson in and he's tried hard, as we know, to get that Coulson in on, in on loan, so you'd think he's going to be his preferred choice, but I think that's a little bit harsh on Penny. I think he's done quite well. Yeah, um, just just going back to the right back uh, situation now. Now Burns is back fit. Do you think that he might be the one that debutizes at right back if Vincent Young is rested or dropped? Yeah, he made he made it. He looked to be fair. He looked rusty as well yesterday, didn't he? Considering he's up against Lewington a couple of times in the first <laughs> half, he knocked it past Lewington and oh, just way, went past him as if he was walking. <laughs> yeah. He thought, Ricky, he's going to have absolute. Yeah, his final field. ball weren't great, was it? Yeah, he's going to have absolute field day here, Burns. But then he just his touch it was off, wasn't it? A few times it yeah, yeah rolled out a play off him. But again, he's been out for a for a couple of weeks, hasn't he? So yeah, he's going to give good. everyone. Give everyone a chance, but it's it's from a defensive perspective. It just needs. Mm-hmm. It's still the central midfield that just looks off to me. You know, there's so much reliance on those two guys to cover when the two fullbacks have gone wandering off up the pitch. It's so much reliance on those two guys to be drilled into them to do their job. And if Lee Evans, who's played for Cook before and surely knows what to be doing, isn't doing it, then it gives no hope to the poor 21 year old that's next to him, who's sort of relying on him to. You know, shoulder responsibility and tell him, let him know what to be, what he should be doing. And he looks like he should be able to do. It. He's got the physique, he's got perfect physique to do it. Evans, yeah. he's big, isn't he? You know, he's he looks he looks the part, but yeah, he's just not not quite there. Yeah, maybe you know, who knows? You know, he may hit on something. Maybe the captaincy is a bit of a burden. It's a, and it's sort of, you know, well, we're not winning. Maybe it is sort of laying on him a bit, and maybe you know, you switch the captaincy maybe to Burgess or someone like that, and he's he's off and running. You know, it's a it's a was he easy? was was Evans his captain at Wigan? Do we know? I think he was, wasn't he? I'm not I don't much know, sure. I don't know to be honest. Uh, I mean, look, should... Anyway, it should make that difference, should it? I guess I don't know. Yeah. Shouldn't it be making the Evans sweat. It will. Be, it will be interesting <laughs> once um, once Carroll's properly up to speed and and ready to go. It'll be interesting to see how he fits in to to that formation. Yeah, it's, it's, there's certainly quality there, isn't it? Yeah. Again, with him, what I liked about him is in passing intent when he got the ball. It was none of these airy fairy balls that pinged in, wasn't it? Every one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, John, one thing we didn't touch upon was the booing at full time, obviously from a noisy minority. But do you agree that it was a massive overreaction? I, I'm going to just come in and say, yeah, yeah, it is. But it, Ipswich fans always boo. If, if, the, if the outcome isn't what they want, <laughs> <laughs> we, they boo that, yeah. Like, and unless we're playing against a a considerably better club than our, than our own, everyone boos. No, it's, it's, it's frustration, isn't it? We're all frustrated, and it's our people let it out. You just get, you know, we've we've seen it. I mean, season in, season out, haven't we? You know, you you're gonna you're just gonna get that. Um, oh, and then yeah. the ex- oh. and this and this season more than ever, the expectation is sky high, isn't it? For God's sake, you know, we haven't had a season, we haven't had a pre-season like this for, for for well virtual not quite since we we said that in the pod didn't we 2000 and what was it 11 or something like that when <laughs> influx of players come in but not to the even that not to the extent of this so the expectation is so high mikey yeah That's I would, okay, if, if i was a player of i was quick i certainly wouldn't be taking it to heart as you say it's just no. an instantaneous reaction of frustration to Conceding another shitty goal oh. to, to lose two points. That's all. And, it, you, and, it, you, you know, so. and as a manager, Phil, and a manager's got you, you can't legislate for that. Yeah. Well, you can't. You know, the phrase a penalty, you can't legislate for a player missing a penalty. You can't, you know, for, you know, the Wolfen and getting, you know, losing possession at Morecambe, you know, Evans probably in exactly the same position yesterday. You, what can you That's, do? And Cook said that, didn't he? He said post match, you know, Macaulay Bond larrups one in from 25 yards on his left foot and I'm the best manager we've got. And then <laughs> Lee Evans gives the bloody ball away 30 yards away from goal and I'm an idiot who doesn't know what he's doing. And so. you said it. You said it right on you know, a few minutes ago, Craig. You said it, you know, good management to have faith after that such a glaring miss to have that kept faith with him, you know. Yeah. But Crikey. No. Is, don't, is, boo, don't boo people after four games. Fine yeah. margins, I think. Fine margins. And you just want some of those fine margins to drop our way. And when they do, I think we'll be fine. I'll, ca- I'll carry on with a few more questions. There's loads of questions about the midfield. Run, yeah. run fat boy, run. 
asked about that. Morris Claude said Mick Mills said that's that a bit harsh Don's, on Evans. Don's <laughs> Mick. <laughs> Morris Claude said Mick Mills said the Don's midfield shaded Harper and Evans. No. FPL tracks are asked does Harper play too high up the pitch for Paul Cook's style? Um, all valid questions. As is FPL tracks are also asked if people have people who think Messi or Ronaldo is the goat seen Scott Twine play at Portman Road. Um, <laughs> He certainly seems to turn it on when, he, when he's against us, doesn't he? He likes, he, seems... that, he likes that little area of the pitch, doesn't he? Just, you know, yeah, 25, 30 yards, 30 yards yeah, out, yeah. Just, just just on that left-hand post of the churchman's end, yeah. He was like, it's, it's, it's come from, again, it's his player. He's come from nowhere. Was it like at Newport beginning of the last season, I think? I think that's right. Yeah, he, um, was, he, was, on loan, he was on loan to him, yeah. He's done a lot of... <laughs> and then he got recalled to Swindon, I think. It's fine. Yeah, just... Yeah, odd one. But no, he's um, he's got that in his locker, as they say. But in, ter- in terms of Harper and, um, you know, the question about playing too far at the pitch, he, you know, again, he's only just joined us, isn't he? he he's he's still getting up to speed with the way that things need to be played and how, how Cook wants him to play and things like that. So, again, you know, as he, Dave said, he, he just looks... I said at Dartford, he, didn't I? He's my player of the season at Dartford, so I've got to stick by him. He just looks silky, doesn't he, on the ball. Lovely sort of movement. It just looks a player, you know. I mean, when it clicks, and it will, it will. <clears throat> you know, it might take to really click another few matches, but when it does, we'll, we'll be... I'm, I'm saying that we'll be fine, my God. And it'll be entertaining as well. Good. I'll just I'll just caveat just caveat my prayer of the season vote saying that we hadn't signed Edwards at that point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. So yeah, thanks everyone for your questions and yeah, apologies if if didn't read yours out. Um let's move into the other results. So Sheffield Wednesday won 2 0 away at Rotherham. I think that's mm. that's a pretty big statement from them. They're s- starting strong and um, they've got some good players in their team as well, especially Barry Bannon. Uh Bolton, 2-1 winners at home to Oxford. Cambridge, big win for, for them at, at home to Burton, 3-0. Burton obviously aren't all that. Um, Wigan, seen, we're expecting Jack, them. To... Jack Langston was on the bench for Cambridge. Okay. I saw the, I saw the evergreen. Squad, is he? I saw the evergreen. He must be 40, is he? Houlihan got an assist. Did he? Oh, fine. Yeah. yeah. He's some player, isn't he? Still doing it. Still, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Wigan expected to be up there. They won 2 0 at Charlton. Portsmouth missed a penalty, um, drew 0 0. I saw some Portsmouth fans complaining about penalty technique, which was um, which was quite funny after last week. Uh, Accrington won 1 0 away at Crewe. Gillingham won 2 1 against Morecambe. Morecambe, obviously, not particularly good. Shrewsbury lost 3 0 at home to Plymouth. Sunderland edged next week's opponents, AFC Wimbledon 1-0, and Wickham got a big result against Lincoln 1-0. And apparently I'm hearing that Wickham might postpone um, against yeah. us because of international call-ups, but that I tried to get that confirmed, Wickham. but they don't know yet. So I imagine we'll find out soon because people will be sorting I mean, out their travel for just Wickham. Look at, yeah, just look at it. Go on. Tickets go on sale. Tickets go on sale for Wickham, I think, tomorrow. Um, so, yeah. but no, I think Phil on TWTD said that he'd heard that Wickham looked like they will probably uh, look to look to postpone it. So mm-hmm. people just maybe just bear that in mind. Sorry, just for Dave talks that Charlton. That's a good result for Wigan, isn't it? Way at Charlton, I think. Yeah. Um, Charlton, are, Charlton are only they're below us, I think, in the league, aren't they? Charlton. Mm-hmm. Obviously, over into, I mean, it's a couple seat. of observations there. Looking, looking at the top six, that um, <laughs> two teams, Sheffield United and Sheffield, well, Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday and Portsmouth, have not conceded yet. Four games, clean <laughs> sheet. As someone said, defences get you uh, get you promotion. However, some big games coming up next week. Sun- already, Sunderland, um, Sunderland at home to Wickham and um, Wigan at home to um, Wigan at home to Portsmouth. Big. Big, so, and yeah, and we'll be up and running after next. Well, there you Saturday go. So you know, some of those, you know, they're not going to pick up maximum points. So you know, you pick up a win, and suddenly you're not ten points; you're seven points. <laughs> but you know, so well, no, not not sorry, not eight points, five, five points behind. Yeah. yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, yeah, early, early days. And I'm and I'm minus two goal difference, and all of a sudden be plus two. They, yeah, well, there you go with a thumping, <laughs> thumping great win. Yeah, we live in hope, don't we? So yeah, time some plugs and. Blue Monday may be back um, midweek uh, for a, a live Q&A. 
Uh, Rich and Seb will definitely be going live at 8 p.m. on Friday night with their preview show. Uh, I believe that Seb Brown might be putting Scal's sense of humour into Room 101 this time, <laughs> uh, which is something to look forward to. The flagship show will, will return next Sunday, possibly a little bit earlier. So, gents, any last words before we go? Just a plug for the preview show. I've got to say that both um, they called it both Rich and Seb called it two two on the preview show, and of course, as I we said, Rich, Rich said nil, nil. and Rich and Rich pegged um, Rich pegged um, O'Reilly in midfield as uh, in midfield as well. So uh, yeah, fair play to those guys. Wish I'd had a punt on that actually, but there you go. Well, you know what to do next next Saturday yeah. then, Dave. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And any any last words from you, Craig? What are you, what are you most excited about for the AFC Wimbledon game? I just, I, as I said before, you know, I think things are things are clicking from from an attacking perspective. Things are getting better and better and better each match. So, say so hopefully, fingers crossed, next week will be the one where we're we're con- conceding none and scoring. Was I say four? Let's go for four. Yeah, I, I think and the final word, I think I just hope that the Wombles of Wimbledon don't come to Portman Road and clean up next week. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. We'll finish there. Up a town. <laughs>